question to you, Nor? Uh, hello, Theodor George from uh, Pencil. Uh, I have a question. Do you uh, have idea to basically to automate also this, not to automate, but to save all these manual changes you will do in order to reapply them if if needed? And how how you think you can? Yeah, that's the idea that we will have that that manual process will be something where we can specify the changes, but it will, you know, we'd, we'd end up having a list. So it's its own little mini process of inserting certain details so that when we do, you know, in six months or 12 months time, get a whole new version of data sources, um, we can you know, that they'll automatically get applied after the, the collider is finished. So that's what we're aiming for. We This is still pretty much in the box on the diagram stage of, of development um, rather than any detailed development. Um, and what I just to answer Anne's question, uh, no, sorry, not Anne's question, Deb's question from earlier about gaps. One of the things I was thinking that we are in the, the position and something Donald had mentioned as well is because we've got occurrence records and when we do the matching, if we can't match it, if it's coming in as a species and we can't match it as a species level, we try and match it further up the hierarchy. So we can look at where we are getting those inexact matches to be able to say, well, these are areas where we're missing information in our taxonomic backbone to be able to place them really accurately. So that's one way of identifying gaps in, in what we've got. So, Okay. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks very much. Now our next speaker is Endymion Cooper, who will talk about building the Australian National Species List. Um, okay, thanks a lot. Um, but it's uh, quite an interesting slot to be put in into the symposium sequence just to come right after Simon because what I'm really talking about is building the Australian national species lists which is sort of the core of what what Simon's trying to to get to be a a useful taxonomy for the atlas of living Australia and it it illustrates s sort of problems at both ends of what this broader symposium is about right this symposium talks about improving list building and the publishing of taxonomic data and it's sort of the way Simon is talking about the national species list. He's talking about us as a publisher, and it sort of tells us that we really need to be thinking of ourselves as a publisher of these things, and how do we do that side of things properly? And on, on a day-to-day -day basis, working with the national species list, I, I tend to think of us more as, as the list builders, right? The people who need the publishers to get their act together. And we're sort of, now we're doing both, right? So that's good, because these are, these lists are things that they're tremendously important and they're very difficult to build and they take a huge amount of time. So what I'm talking about is um, the Australian National Species List. Um, I'll, I'll come to a, a point that Simon said earlier, um, Australian National Species Lists, and I'm calling it the Australian National Species List. So that's part of what this, this talk is about, the way that we're turning a whole bunch of uh, separate bits and pieces into a single useful thing so that people like the Atlas can come along and use that more seamlessly. Um, so jumping in, maybe. Oh, now I've gone too far. There we go. Uh, good, right. So. The Australian National Species List is sort of like uh, the Australian ITIS that was talked about before. Um, this is a, a sort of go-to national taxonomy that um, various, the Atlas of Living Australia, various government agencies, they need a, a taxonomic resource to be able to make their, their data more useful. Um, and the Australian National Species List tries to do that. And we do that from various bits and pieces, right? So uh, we have a lot of active work going on right now to redevelop bits and pieces, one of which is is making that single list. So um, 
this is sort of the work in progress of new front-end websites that we're, we're building. And this slide just shows some tiles of the, the bits and pieces that we're putting together. These bits and pieces have histories dating back, um, like uh, the Australian Faunal Directory began life as a, as a book series more than 40 years ago, right? So we've got these old resources, they've got their big uh, dedicated user con communities, their contributor communities, they've got their expectations, they've got these big wealth of legacy data um, and their ways of doing things. Um, and we're, we're bringing all of those things together into one place, but we're allowing those separate resources to continue to live on in their current form in a way that the the users and the builders of those systems continue to value them, right? So the AFD, the Australian Formal Directory, Census, um, the, the Floor of Australia, these things continue on as the resources that those communities know and expect because those communities are the people who are going to sit there at their keyboards and generate the, the input data for this, right? So the people doing the actual hard work of getting the data in in the first place, we need to make sure that we're bringing them along and we're not going to lose them in this process. So the Australian National Species List isn't really a thing. It's a fabrication, a thing that we put together from all of these other things. Um, and its purpose is to provide one place that anybody who wants, who's got information attached to uh, the Australian context, a native or naturalised um, taxon occurring in Australia, they've got information about that, they've got a name about that. We want to pro provide one place where they can go and find out the status of that name, what that name might refer to, all of those sorts of questions all in one place, right? So we continue to present the separate resources, but we also present a single place that you can go to and search. You can find out what things are. Um, so just quickly to illustrate that, what that is, um, you should be able to put in any name you've got that you think applies to something in the Australian context, and you should be able to get back anything that any of those resources that we have um, knows about that name and also what the sort of the consensus view of what, what the correct name for that thing is, right? So you should be able to find out, is that name accepted? Is it a synonym of something else? Is it a name that actually has occurred in Australian literature? But uh, we now know for sure that it refers to a taxon that doesn't occur here, so we exclude that name. All of those sorts of things, we need to be able to find them all in one place. So just a high-level overview of the, this infrastructure that we've, we've put together for this. Um, at one end, there's the, the first bit about the building the lists, right? This is the bit where the data comes in. So we have a dedicated application and a data editor application. It's a web app that uh, our contributors can access from anywhere that uh, puts in various structures in place to allow them to interact with the data that's already there and to make sure that we we make it as easy as possible to generate good data. And then we've got our, our database in the middle, we've got our data model for, for holding everything that we want to capture, and we're developing a range of different ways of putting data out, and this is the publisher, publisher bit where we're being a publisher, we're developing a range of different ways of putting that data out that's going to be most useful to people like Simon and the ALA, but also all of our other users. Um, so we've had some talk here about standards and things. Um, so for us, we we would like the data to be as, as standard and easy as possible at the input end. Um, but we we're gonna we're gonna hold that in our way in our database so that we can capture everything that we think we need to, and we're gonna put that out at the other end. We're not going to stick with one particular standard. We're trying to, going to try to match what we think people want. And so the, the talks earlier in this symposium about Checklist Bank, for us, that's really like 
this is good. This is a thing. This is a place where where we can send data off to, so that people can, like Simon, can use it to build the ALA by merging it with other sources and stuff. So we hear this this talk about Checklist Bank, Cold DP. Uh, Niels's talk about how TCS lines up with the Cold DP format and its model, and we hear that and we go, okay, we can go away and we can build expressions of the NSL expressions of the NSL data that people can pick up, plug into those things and, and go away. Um, so I just put this up as just a, an example of um, the data that we're capturing. These are, this is where our, our curators, our editors, our, our people who do the actual work of making data, they go off to resources like this. This is just an extract from the Flora of Australia when the Flora of Australia was a book series. It's a fairly conventional way of presenting a botanical taxonomic concept, right? It's got an accepted name. It lists synonyms. It lists uh, those synonyms in different ways depending on how they're related to the accepted name. Um, so into the NSL, we capture this, right? We capture the reference. We capture the author of the reference. We capture the authors of the name and where those are the same. We link them up. Uh, we capture the taxon names and we we capture the ways in which the taxon names are occurring in the references, right? So how how have they been used in the references? And we want to make sure that we capture the how it's been used in the reference with the reference, right? We don't want to lose the fact that it's been used in this way in this place. The NSL can then go away and do things with that later on, but we don't want to capture concepts and lose the, the context of who said the what, right? Who said the what is of critical importance to us. Um, so I talked, I, I mentioned the data editor and the list, the list building bit being of critical, uh, of like underappreciated significance. That's where all the hard work happens. We have a dedicated application for our data set that allows editors to build on what's already there. So it's not a, a, a process of recreating stuff. Um, so it's got query mechanisms to find and put together the bits to build up the, the ways that names are used and related to each other um, from, you know, tracing it way, all the way back to the protolog where the names were first published and that sort of thing. Um, we're doing some current work on the editor to try to put in a mechanism where we can deal with batches of things. Because at the moment, it's very much keyed in one at a time. Um, and we're increasingly aware that there, there are other places where we could be uh, bringing in batches of data, putting it through a process where uh, our editors can then just evaluate that and save a, a bunch of time, right? So that's the bit where we'd like to be seeing other publishers using some of these emerging community standards, whether it be uh, uh, cold DP like um, data formats or, or TCS uh, in its new iteration. Um, and just jump back to what we're doing with that, right? So we want to fix up our, our editor end so that we can start to make use of faster ways of doing things, ways of getting getting data in more efficiently from other sources. Um, but we're also doing a lot of work on our um, exports. And that's a, a part of it where sometimes we feel like we're, we're not getting enough input back from people as to what they really want. Uh, and so we hear, Sometimes we hear later on about requirements that people have, think, reasons, ways that they have been unable to use our data um, and things that they've had to do with what we're providing. And we hear back later on the ways that they've solved those problems. And we just sort of like, well, let us know and let us solve that for you. Um, so in, in finishing, uh, I guess it, it really is this um, idea that we all need to be thinking of ourselves as both uh, list builders and publishers. Um, we will have our own requirements, we'll have our own way of handling the data and the own th our own things we want to do with them, but we've got to think about the outputs that we, we generate in a way that other people are going to be able to use them. And hopefully, uh, like Simon was saying with the NSL, they're still going to need to merge that with some other sources and there's going to be some manual, manual checks there. Hopefully, if we get our data standards working well, 
the manual checks that they do there can then just pass things back to us where they're relevant to us and improve it at source. Thanks. Thanks very much. While we're switching on to uh, an online presentation, there's uh, room for one question, if, if there is.